Hey everyone, welcome. If you're planning on upgrading or building your own home server, you should definitely check this out. It's this motherboard you see in the background now, which got me very excited. It's the X470D4U. It's a motherboard from ASRock and it's from their WAC series, so their professional line of products. And this one is suitable for workstation slash server use. It supports the AM4 socket Ryzen series CPUs. And they don't mention uh, Ryzen 1, uh, the, the first generation. So um, as for now, I'm guessing it only supports the second generation of Ryzen series CPUs. It supports four times DDF4 ECC, unbuffered DIMM uh, with a maximum of 64 gigabytes. So that should be more than enough for a normal home server. We have a six times SATA 3 connection. One of them is a DOM port, disk on module port. We have an integrated IPMI 2.0 with KVM, keyboard, video and mouse and a dedicated LAN for that as well. And that is a Realtek uh, network card and the other two network ports are from Intel. We can see we have a EPS connector, eight pins. Then we have the 24 pins uh, ATX connector. We have some fan headers and it has plenty of fan headers as well. So for the server, that's really nice. Then we can see on the right two M.2 slots, which both support uh, PCI Express and one of them supports SATA. We can set this up on a RAID configuration for the M.2 slots. Enables or disables NVMe RAID mode. Yeah. Then we have the front panel connectors, a BIOS uh, status monitoring. Well, it's a little display on the motherboard. And we can see three PCIe Gen 3 slots. You could use it for a RAID controller, of course, or for a 10 gigabit Ethernet card, because they come with one gigabit Ethernet ports. I guess you can't have everything. Okay. The memory size modules that are supported on this motherboard are 64 gigabytes. 32 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, and 8 gigabytes. Well, it supports a maximum of 64 gigabytes. So basically you could go with um, four times 16 gigabytes. Yeah, um, the voltage it supports is 1.2 volts. Um, we have two additional SATA connections. Those are from S Media. It's the 1061, uh, also six gigabit. Then we come to the management controller, which is a A-Speed AST2500. Um, the port that is used for that is a Realtek uh, Gigabit Ethernet port, RTL8211E. And basically you can do anything with this server through this port. Uh, you can install your server with this for a remote display. Uh, you can monitor the status of your drives, your memory, uh, all that kind of stuff, network activity, uh, everything. You can power it down, you can power it on, um, basically like what you can do with ILO. Then we go to the graphics controller. Um, this is the A-Speed AST2500 as well. And this is basically because Ryzen 7 2700 CPUs don't come with an integrated GPU. It has 256 megabytes of dedicated free RAM. And uh, we have one serial port and we have a UID button UID LED. And that will be the one on top, I think. Yeah, you can see it on the left there. Um, and let's see what else do we have. The fan headers, as we saw before on the picture, um, it comes with six fan headers, a four pins PWM connectors. So you should be able to get plenty of cooling on your workstation slash server. Um, further on, we have a one USB 3.1 internal header. Uh, it supports two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports. Um, we have no USB 2.0 header. Well, it's backwards compatible also. We have some temperature sensing, fan speed control, voltage control, all that kind of stuff. Um, operating systems supported, of course, Windows, Linux. As for now, I have no clue what this motherboard will cost or when it will be available. So I will definitely pay close attention to this motherboard. Um, is, this is actually very suitable. Uh, I have a 2700X from my upgrade to the i9, and this should be a very cool upgrade for my Gen 8 micro server from HP which only supports max to uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And it's equipped with a Xeon E3 1220 uh, V2. So yeah, this would definitely be a performance boost for that. Yeah, we'll definitely keep track of this motherboard. I will put the link on where you can find this motherboard in the video description. Um, so that's that. Another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video on, um, on Xpanology, basically on the Xpanology tutorial. So yeah, we did. And um, that is what's, that it was time for us to well move to something else, try different um, NAS solutions. So from the comments of that video, it basically um, boiled down to open media vault and unraid. And both 
are very interesting and with both I don't have any experience. So I decided to start with Open Media Vault uh, for myself, so on my Gen 8 microserver. And I migrated my uh, Exponology build to this Open Media Vault. And it's basically pretty much uh, done. And we're going to have a look at it uh, yeah, right now. So let's see what I came up with. So basically, this is the, the dashboard window. I've installed a couple of, um, of roles, a couple of packages. Uh, interesting to note, I backed up all my data that was on the hard drives, the two times three terabytes and the two times two terabyte hard drives, but I didn't have to. Uh, once I installed Open Media Vault and I wanted to import the disks, I could just import the, the whole rate setting from the, um, from the Exponology build. And that's because it was already um, partitioned with a better FS file system. And that works really well. Uh, we can see them, uh, the hard drives in the background. We have two, two terabytes, two, three terabytes. Um, Open Media Vault is installed on a class 10 uh, micro SD card. It has a SD card a slot on board this motherboard. So that's where Open Media Vault is installed. And we have the Transcend 256 gigabyte SSD. And this one is still used as a data store for the virtual machines. At this moment, I have two virtual machines installed. And let's see if we go to VirtualBox and we go to the virtual machines. We have Vega. Uh, Vega in this case is my uh, Windows configuration. Just basically I have a Windows installation on me all the time. I connect through VPN and bam, I have the remote desktop session. Um, and we have the Beetlejuice and Beetlejuice is my Ubuntu server. I run my DNS server on it. And at the moment there is, um, I believe a Minecraft server running. Yeah, the Minecraft server is running on this as well. And the TeamSpeak server is running on this. And let's have a look on the system information. As you can see, I only have 12 gigabytes of RAM installed in the server. The server only supports unregistered, unbuffered DIMM modules and 16 gigabytes is the max. So for that, I, yeah, I, I'm really excited about this ASRock motherboard um, we saw earlier. Um, the RAM usage is almost 70%. Well, basically uh, the Ubuntu server has four gigabytes of RAM and the um, Vega installation has three gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, it's not much. I don't have that much headroom left. So um, the, the CPU can handle it quite well. That's not a problem. Uh, the network speeds on this Open Media Vault installation are pretty decent as well. Uh, just gigabit ethernet speeds you would expect um, between 110 and 120 megabytes a second. So I have nothing to complain there. Um, the Plex Media server is running really well. Um, I have NGINX for the, for the website, still configuring this. Uh, Let's Encrypt, didn't start with Let's Encrypt. This one I want to use for the SSL certificates, didn't put any time in it. Um, the configuration of it all is a little bit harder than on uh, DSM. DSM is very user friendly. But I'm still um, experimenting with this Open Media Vault installation. I just want to give you guys a heads up. Uh, as you can see, Docker is on this as well. I'm planning to use Docker for the IP cam, uh, which is not running at the moment. It's not recording anything. So um, that's something to look into. And yeah, I'm, as I mentioned before, I'm still experimenting with uh, Open Media Vault. Um, on the other hand, I want to get started with Unraid as well. It seems very interesting. You can use uh, Unraid as a NAS solution. Uh, the, so the, the basic operating system is your NAS. And on top of that, you can install virtual machines. Let's say two Windows 10 machines. If you have two dedicated GPUs in your system, you can, um, you can address each GPU to a different virtual machine. So basically you could have you know, multiple gaming systems in one PC and Linus Tech Tips did a video on that as well. Really cool. Um, is it as good as a NAS solution as DSM or Open Media Vault? I really wanted to start with FreeNAS on this Gen 8 build, but it's just not going to happen. Uh, FreeNAS has the uh, listed in the system requirements. Uh, the bare minimum of RAM used with FreeNAS should be eight gigabytes. On top of that, they advise one gigabyte of RAM per terabyte on um, yeah, drive capacity. Well, I have 10 terabytes, so that should point me on what, 18 gigabytes? It's not even what this server supports. So maybe that is something with the Ryzen server build. That would be really cool. I'm just exploring all of this and we'll probably start doing uh, videos about Open Media Vault um, in the near future, but for Unraid as well. 
and I have a couple of GPUs, so that's, uh, that's worth testing. So as for now, I will leave the video at this. Please let us know in the comment section what you think of the new X470D for you motherboard from uh, ASRock. What do you think of Open Media Vault? If you have any comment suggestions, some advice, well, you can leave them in the comment section as well, of course. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.